rough them up. Uh, kia ora tato, no mai hari mai. Uh, welcome to our meeting of Rangatane o Manawa Tu, uh, committee meeting of Wednesday the 30th of June 2021. Before we get underway, I will ask uh, uh, Wiramu uh, if he could open, please. We're not used to starting at three minutes past one. We were all here, Rangatani was present, so we wondered what the time was, but we'll extend grace to you today. Inoi tata. E to mātou mā tītirangi, ki a tapu tō ingoa, ki a tā mā tō rangatiratanga, ki a mete au tō i pai ai ki rungo te whenua, ki rite anu ki tō te rangi, ho mai ki a mātou i nāi nei. E tara mā mātou mō tēnei rā, mūra mātou hara, me mātou huki a muru nei i o te hunga arana ki mātou. 
Hoki mātou i kāwi e kia wega wānga, engari, hoka rangi e mātou i te keno, hoki te ranga tira tanga me te kaha me te kōrea. A ke a ke, amene. Worship the Mayor, a iwi ngā hau e whā, councillors, a tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou, a tēnā koutou katoa. Uh, kia ora, thank you. Thank you, Urumu. Uh, I'd just like to explain that the meeting is being recorded. Uh, it's on the Council's website. It is also being streamed via our YouTube channel. Uh, in terms of health and safety uh, for members of the public, uh, f um, in terms of our evacuation areas and the unlikely event of an emergency, we assemble at the clock town to Marae the square, uh, through our exits and with the green signs. In terms of health and safety as well, obviously a non-smoking facility. Uh, a defibrillator is located in the front of the house on the ground floor. And any incidents, please uh, report those to the committee administrator. Um, I just want to acknowledge our, uh, our other members of our committee here, um, Councillor Karen Naylor, uh, Mr Chris Faipu, uh, Councillor Vaughan Dennison, and Ms. Danielle Harris, um, and also to other councillors and uh, members of the public here. In terms of apologies, uh, number two on our order of business, uh, we ha I have received none. So moving on to notifications of additional items, again I have received none if there's nothing from the floor. Uh, declarations of interest, uh, again I haven't um, been notified of anything as well. In terms of public comment, again, there has been none. So we'll move through to number six, which is confirmation of the minutes of our previous Rangatane or Manawatu committee meeting on the 25th of November 2020, part one. Public be confirmed as a true and correct record. Um, I'm quite happy to move that, and it's seconded by Deputy Chair for today. And you'll note that we are uh, co chairing. Uh, Wiramu uh, chaired the first meeting, uh, and I'm chairing obviously today. Uh, are there any matters arising from that? That's on uh, councillors and committee members. That's on page seven of your papers. Any matters arising? There being none, we will look to vote, please. And um, for those newer members of the committee, uh, one is yes, two is no, and three is abstain. Please don't get them mixed up. And this passed. Six votes for, none against. Thank you. Right, moving through to our reports. We have num uh, number seven on our agenda item is Tomoto Apotoa development plan and we have an update uh, and that will be presented um, by uh, Cathy Diva Todd, our manager of parks and reserves um, and I think Jason's here as well, Jason Pilkington. I invite you up please. Page 11 of your papers, committee members and councillors. Uh, tēnā koutou katoa. Um, I thought today we would just um, go over a bit of an update on what uh, we're doing with Rangatane um, in our partnership along the Manawatu River. Uh, and then we'll finish off with where we're at with the Tomotua Potua development plan. So in terms of the... Oh, there should be a presentation um, up here. Uh, just one moment, Jason. We'll catch up. Right, we have action now. So what we'll take a look at today, um, 
I'm quite happy that we um, stop at the end of each one of these and, and you can ask some questions if you want because each one of these is a fairly big um, piece of work so instead of getting to the end and then uh, you know, having questions fielded on everything, I'm quite happy that we stop at each one, ask some, ask some questions and then continue through if you're okay with that. Through the chair. Okay, so in terms of the sites, we'll be looking at the Tiratia Pass site viewing platform today. Tini Fetu Kitirangi, which is a large um, pattern that you had up on the, um, up on the, the display before um, when we came in. The Marae Tarata development plan, the lighting design, the implementation at Fitzherbert Bridge, and the planning work for the Victoria Esplanade lighting. That's the finishing of our lighting loop on the river. Ahimate Reserve Pofenoa, Albert Street River Entranceway build, and the Tomotua Potua development plan. So what you can see here is the, the concept drawing from local landscape architects for the Tiratia Pass site. Um, it's a two-storied viewing platform and you see that it's got glass um, frontage on it. The platform itself is uh, probably about um, two or three metres back from the edge, uh, but it's about a metre and a half high, so you get a really nice feel that you're actually right at the edge of that that cliff face there, and then you've got that second story up there too. The glass will all be um, sandblasted, I believe, by Ephraim Russell, and um, also uh, Craig Kawana is carving po uh, that will sit at the pass site too as a welcoming, and two of those po will face back towards Ahimate Reserve. Um, there'll be six po in total. And um, Chris and Ephraim are also working on a celestial compass that will sit in the middle of that pass site. And I believe that it's cast in bronze. And that will refer to a number of um, key cultural sites that you'll be able to see from that viewing platform. It'll kind of point out to them. Um, I mean, the Tiritia pass site kind of harks back, harkens back to the days when, I guess, um, Rangatane used that site um, as an area where they would, you know, view the river anybody coming up and down, they would assess threats and things like that. And so for us, um, we're kind of trying to reinvigorate that, um, that activity that went on there as, you know, as part of that, that historical reenactment. Um, and also, um, I guess, just the, the, the kind of features that we're building into it too. So the whole thing is to use the infrastructure to tell the story of, of the past itself. Um, and that kind of stuff saves us money as well. So, you know, building the infrastructure into the storytelling. Are there any questions on the pass site? I'll, I'll, I'll kick that off and then I'll go to Councillor Johnson. So completion time, Jason, for? I would say October, November. Uh, so the pass site's under fabrication at the moment. So the steel's been made. The access way for that pass site is already built, so essentially we have to come in through the top of that cliff face that you'll see from the Urban Eels platform. We come in from the top of there and then we come down to the pass site. So we've had to build a road through there so that we can get concrete trucks and stuff like that to this pass site. So it's a pretty difficult kind of build, um, but essentially we're building the bulk of it off site and we'll bring it on and we'll just put it together as a, almost like a kit set. Very good. Um, and using the infrastructure, the, in fact, the compass that what you've got there, so that will have pointers, will it, to other significant sites? Is that what that's, it's...? That's correct, I believe. Right, OK. Councillor Johnson. Uh, thanks, Mr. Mayor. Um, thanks, Jason. Um, can you just explain exactly where it's going? Because I'm not really very clear. OK, um, so you know where the eel platform is? Yep. And when you look up from the eel platform, you see that high point and you've got the kids jumping off the really top of the rocks up, up there for the swimming. And you'll see that there's basically a big wooden kind of fence up there. Yeah, so that, that bit That's that goes it. off to the right that we've already got, yeah. there's already a po there and stuff. So, so it's that that'll side be there, replaced with right, this. Okay. Yeah, okay. That's, that's the site right there. Cool, yeah. thank you. Sorry, it just wasn't all that clear. Right, we can continue on. Okay, um, Tini Fetu Kitirangi, which is, you know, it's about a, I'd say, four and a half hectare piece of hard stand. Um, this was designed by, by Warren Warbrook, um, and it's essentially um, got glowstones in it. So 
what we've done there is we've got a functional kind of feature to this, which is a, an, a major kind of events hard stand area. Um, I believe we're holding Matariki down here this year. Um, and also, Tini Fetu Kitirangi is the, the whakatoki that uh, refers to the millions of stars in the sky in Rangatane. And so the, the glow pattern is designed to kind of mimic that, um, the stars on the Earth. And also, the shape of the pattern and the way that it runs around the river um, is designed to tell the story of the river couriers that Māori used to run up and down the river. And they would, you know, deliver um, kind of stories and, um, you know, tell, you know, who's coming and probably deliver goods and, and services as well in um, Wakatiti. That's right, in Wakatiti, yeah. So, um, and that can be seen, it's, a, it's really large, so you can see it when you come in from Christchurch on the plane. Um, so, you know, we're going for that really kind of iconic, um, iconic stuff that's really visual and that sings out of a, of a specific thing that people will recognise in Palmerston North. And you can see this obviously from Tomoto Apota as well. So as that development occurs up there, this will become a, you know, like a key feature of that as well. Any questions on that? Um, uh, Jason, like could, could I just ask, is that complete now? Yeah. It is, okay. There, there are some more things to go in there this year. So um, we're going to, to, to nail the beach back so that you've got a nice beach access off it. And we're putting some... Um, parklets in there like you see at the coffee club and things like that so that you'll be able to walk through there and sit on it. And the idea is that we're hoping to attract more people there. Uh, they'll stay longer. We're putting some hammock trees up there too. Um, so kids will be able to sit in hammocks and, and kind of bundles. Uh, and, you know, just, just that kind of stuff that sits around it. Um, this was also the area where they first discovered moa prints in New Zealand as well. So the first moulds of moa prints are in Tamanawa. So we've um, got uh, Detlef Klein who's taking uh, moulds of those mower feet and we're going to do some concrete work down there with some signage and put the feet into the concrete and stuff. You know, little things like that to, to just kind of bring some of that kind of history and, and interest back into the, these kind of cool areas that, for the most part, we don't really know about. Councillor Harpeter. Um, is there any storyboards down there to tell a story around this? Because a lot of people ask questions around this area and yep. how do we do that interpretation of what this means? Because I get asked a lot of questions about what this means and what you've just said is a great story, but I, to give that interpretation to the community would be great, but I can't just repeat what you've just said. Okay. And I'd love to know if there would be some storyboards around that. Yep. Did, if you've walked past it and you've seen that large piece of earth that we've left there, that's going to be moulded into a big storyboard with the concrete coming around it and the mower prints in it. I thought you were going to tell me the large piece of earth was the storyboard. <laughs> it, it, it kind of will be, yeah. You'll be able to walk on it, yeah. Okay, thank you, Jason. Everything's big. <laughs> Anything else? Oh, sorry, uh, Councillor Bowen. Thank you, Mr Mayor, and apologies for late arrival. Um, Jason, um, Tini Fetu Kitirangi, is that the name of the work or is that the name of the place? That's the name of the work. Have we given any thought to n naming this place as part of the river framework as a destination point for people? So you'll, you'll see um, when the Esplanade entranceway is finished there'll be a large three metre map that'll be going in there. And those maps will start to emerge at all of these key entranceways that we're building. Um, they're big, long, three metre maps um, on the backs of seats, um, core 10 steel seats with macrocarpa um, bottoms. And they will have all of these sites on that map. So we needed to kind of wait with the mapping and stuff like that in the storyboards till we had enough in place before we you know, we don't want to direct people to these kind of places that don't quite exist yet. So we think we're at a, at a point now where we can start to kind of get the wayfinding stuff in. So you'll see all that stuff going up probably in the next few months. And we'd, um, we'd be working in partnership with Rangatane, I'm assuming, to give names to spaces or to recognise cultural names for those spaces? Yeah, so Warren, um, Warren named this work. Um, kia ora. Yeah, it actually already has a name. Um, it's actually the former Ruahine village. 
Mm. Yeah, so that there is where the Ruihine village was all the way through the golf course, all the way into the Hokafitu uh, domain sort of area as well. Mm -hmm. So um, the forward thinking also is that we were hoping to um, um, uh, reactivate it by moving back to a traditional garden style theme of where our traditional gardens mostly were and look at a river, a river market of sorts. Uh, so the Ruihine River Market. Huh, thank you. Thanks very much, Mr. Mayor. Yeah. So yeah, we're, we're working with Rangatani on the naming and all that kind of stuff and the maps. Uh, the maps will all be done in the style of the London Underground map, mapping system. So you'll see those subway map pieces go up onto the pavement and at each entrance way and exit those will guide you and they'll ha come with a, a set of like a subway card that will attach to the seats and you'll be able to pull that off and you'll be directed through that. Um, so all that stuff's kind of been designed now and it's just kind of, we're rolling it out and we need to trial it. So we'll use the Esplanade entranceway as our first trial and see how it goes. Hopefully people can find their way around because it's not, the maps aren't north facing, right? They're facing as if you were actually in the space. So we have to test that one out. Thank you. Uh, marae Tarata. So in terms of um, the development plan for Marae Tarata, this is a fairly well scoped plan in terms of the, the Manawatu River framework. Um, it's uh, slated for a restoration type plan. Uh, restoration in the terms of sense of both cultural um, recreation and uh, biodiversity and, and you know that kind of natural kind of stuff. So one of the uh, things we, we looked at uh, with Rangatane was whether or not we could redirect water from the Mangoni stream through a series of wetlands in that area there um, to filter that water out and clean it and then run it back into the river through natural groundwater. So that's a, a fairly major project. Um, the 10 year plan has about $3 million for that. You're probably looking at about 10 years of cut and fill. So those water bodies that are there now need to come up from the bottom, they're at river level now, and the rest of the site needs to go down. And um, ultimately, uh, we looked at whether we could put weirs in there or what that might look like, but we believe we'll have to pump water into it, which isn't necessarily a major issue. So this is just in concept phase at the moment. We're um, going to workshop this with Rangatane at our next infrastructure bi-monthly, in particular to have a look at, at this kind of stuff. Uh, the main thing for this was to get more from and those guys to let us know if it was even possible. Um, so it is possible, but it's difficult. Do you have any questions on this one? I can see some very puzzled looking faces around the room. So, so I, might, um, I, might, I might start off. So this is, this is the old uh, gravel extraction at, at right at the end of um, behind the uh, Awapuni Murph, is that right? Recovery centre, yep. Okay. And currently there are some big holes there. Yep. Right. So it's a, it's a case of bringing those up to a yep. suitable level and then working through the design of a, a working wetland, wetlands. So these, were, these are big gravel extraction pits and part of the resource consent was to fill them up with clean fill and we've come through and said we don't want them to be filled up with clean fill, we want to take this back and we want to reinvigorate some of the kind of uh, wetland areas that the, the, the river uh, margins would have had in the past. And are you looking at, Jason, bringing the pathway that currently sort of stops That's and goes right. into Maxwell's line, bringing that around the end and, and then a, across the Mangoni? Is it? Is it? That's right. So this is the kind of, I guess it's your corner piece of the jigsaw in that shared path on this side of the, of the city. So, um, the, of course, the other piece is the Dun Block, uh, and that connects us from Ahimate right through to the Mangoni stream on this, if we get our shed pass through here. So that's quite a big deal. Mm, very good. Are there any questions? Councillor Hancock. Yes, uh, thanks Jason. Uh, just quickly, just um, just in respect to the damming of the Mangoni stream, how, how much would the, that be raised for that pumping to occur? Um, so what you're seeing here, um, we don't have to dam it. So there are damming options 
but if we dam it, we need to create weirs, and they would go all the way up to Pioneer Highway. So it's not really an option for us to do that. It's, it's far too complex and expensive. So we're looking to pump water up. Councillor Naylor. Um, thanks. I just wondered, um, there's some um, boxes there with quite small writing in it. Are, um, is this presentation going to be circulated at all so that we can look at it at another time? Yes. Yep. Um, this, this is very much in draft um, stage um, and, and kind of concept phase. So with this kind of stuff, we're really testing to see if we can do it or not. So just keep that in mind. Um, We've had all the water bodies tested because it's a hail site, right? It's, there's leachate through there. Um, you can't swim in any of these water bodies down there. Um, there's, there's heavy metals coming through. So, you know, this is, this is really a key area that we need to kind of, you know, give a bit of love to. Very good. Thank you. Um, the second piece of Manai Tarata is... Um, the establishment of a, a carving and cultural arts hub down here. Um, and when I say that, I, I don't, I, I mean the kind of workspace. Um, so where all the kind of heavy lifting and heavy work gets done. Um, so when we, um, when we took the site back from Higgins, there was some old buildings left on that site. There's concrete pads left on the site. And because this, um, this site was a major gravel extraction area, it's got large transformers. It's got water to the site. Um, it's got, uh, you know, when I say large transformers, that's three-phase power and all of that kind of stuff down there. So this is essentially set up for a really heavy work site. Um, and there's large sheds down here that we can get um, grapple hooks, diggers, all of that kind of stuff into. So um, I know that when we did uh, Wild Base, we really struggled when... Rangatana had major carving works on to put them somewhere and we ended up having to put the carvers in Ashurst Domain, uh, which wasn't ideal. Um, so we'd kind of been looking around, you know, just as things came, came along to see whether there was anything other suitable for them. And when this came up, um, Chris and I just went down to have a look at it and thought it's so far away from everywhere. It's on a cultural site that we know that Rangatane want to... to you know, reinvigorate and re you know, habit, you know, habituate again, I guess, be down there. And um, so the other thing is that the water bodies that are there are very sharp. And what happens is when it floods through there, it's holding up all the logs. So we've probably got about 50 or 60 native timber logs sitting in those water bodies. So Chris has already purchased a grapple um, hook digger and those guys can just start dragging logs. We've probably got about 200 logs down there now. So each one of these is in the order of about $10,000 for a total log if we were to purchase them. So working with Rangatane on this is, a, you know, it's just a game changer for us. And I think, um, you know, Chris, correct me if I'm wrong, but you guys will be able to start developing your own taonga down there for civic ceremonies and, and all of those kind of things too. So this is a really kind of cool capacity building uh, thing and I guess to have eyes on site would be really good down here too. We get a lot of fly tipping down here. Um, they just drive through the gates and trucks and, and dump stuff. So, you know, Ahimate was like that. It's not like that anymore. So we know that when we get eyes on site that, you know, this, the, the place starts to change in terms of what people do down there. So it'd be really good to, um, it's just the perfect spot really. So um, we're looking at the moment on a resource consent, so we met today about with Horizons and uh, some of our planners to see whether or not we can um, issue resource consent down there, and it looks pretty good. Any questions on that one? Councillor Harpeter. So what's it used for now? Nothing. And is it rented or anything like that? No. Okay. So is there any rates paid on it? Uh, whew, that's a good question. I, I, I don't believe so. Higgins probably would have been paying rates on it. It's council property. Okay. So it's just they, they won't be they won't be large. Um, it's a floodplain area. You know, th there's not a lot of value in it. Um, the the shed is really a work shed. It's not a comfortable kind of spot. Yeah. Uh, but it's got toilets. Um, you know, which is unusual in the river. Um, river Plains, so it's it's pretty well set up. Thank you. 
they were doing concrete bowl blasting down there for a while, so they're washing the concrete trucks out. Uh, Councillor Johnson. Um, Jason, have we got budgets for all of these projects in place? Yes. Yeah. Now, now we do. Yeah. This what, one from uh, the long term plan, you mean? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I think this one's about three point four million for and my title, so. What what years are these projects in? Do you know off the top yep. of your head? So fifty five thousand dollars this year to do the initial concept planning for this plan and the public engagement on it. Uh, and then I believe next year I've got about 150000 because I, I believe detailed design for this will, will probably be fairly significant in terms of a wetland development. This has got to work right. You know, we can't have some wetland going wrong. So we need to spend a bit of money with those water guys. And, they, you know. and then we've got um, budgets for boardwalks, um, the cultural aspects of it, you know, waharoas and entranceways. Um, Rangatane have also talked about potential um, for village style um, areas down here as well. So, um, you know, we've got a budget for that. We've also been talking with Danielle and some of the corrections teams. Uh, there's a big opportunity down here because it won't be publicly open to have corrections do their wheels, tracks, and rollers courses down here. They can't really go wrong. They could fall in the water, but that's about it. Um, so, you know, they can five, six years worth of um, training or what have you down here too. So there's a whole lot of opportunities here. Okay, thanks. Uh, Councillor Dennison. Um, the question's been answered around budget and, and what it needs for reinstating use, thanks. Uh, Councillor Beatty. Probably just to follow on from the budget one. Um, in the report, these go, these, because the, I assume that the costs of this are for the whole seven. In the report, there's a shortfall of about 3.5 million. Oh, sorry, that's for Tomotua Potua. So we'll, we'll get to that. Um, okay, so The only budgets I've mentioned in the report are for Tomotua Potua. I haven't spoken about budgets. Okay, so this is what I was just... This is more of an update on... On these other... Th okay, right, now I understand. Tomotua Potua is the only one unbudgeted in terms of what we think it would would cost at this stage, just on what we know, relative to what we've got. And because they weren't mentioned in the report, now I understand. Yep. Thank you. <laughs> um, Danielle. Not a question, just a comment. For us at the Marae, this is really exciting because this is bringing back Awapuni to its former glory. Um, you know, these areas have been quite degraded and polluted and our past sites, you can see that the state they're in. So um, our Marae and our people who work there and our people who come there are actually feeling a lot more warmer because our marae is no longer just the beacon down the centre town. We've got marae tarata happening, we've got ahi mate, so um, it's great recognition and reconnection for our people and the community. And um, I believe that these um, activities will pay for themselves and tourism that will be attracted to the city. So I just want to acknowledge the work of the operational team. Kia ora. Sounds like I've been saying marae tarata wrong the whole time, sorry. Uh, Councillor Naylor. Um, just for clarity, Mr Chair, have we jumped to item eight, or is this a... S OK, that makes more sense. Yeah, Thank you. Do, as, as the officer said, he was taking them both together. So we're taking them both together. So are we meant to be asking questions for item seven as well? Is that what you're saying? Not yet, no. Oh, no. OK. Um, Councillor Barrett. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thanks, Jason. So there's a question a little bit prompted by this, but the slide before as well in terms of sort of the corridors for public access into that space. So are you thinking along the Manawatu River as well as along the Mangoni? Or? Um, I, I suspect that uh, the public access side of things will um, occur a little bit later. So there's a lot of earthworks that have to happen in here, so we're going to have to be very careful on how we, we manage public access on the site. What I'm thinking at the moment is that the road that's in there at the moment is the shortest possible part, you know, route through. That's your transport route, that's your shared path right there, it's further up. Um, and that pushes the kind of bikes, the dogs, all of that kind of stuff up there, and we can focus further down on the biodiversity stuff and probably have, probably end up with a slightly different um, way of managing 
you know, animals or things like, you know, we may not have dogs in certain areas. There's a lot of um, native wildlife in here. There's a lot of poaka and things like that that are quite sensitive. So um, the site will have to be managed fairly, fairly carefully in terms of access. Um, but we're not at that stage yet where we've kind of figured out what's going to go where. We really need to work through that with Rangatane. So um, just to add to that, um, the intention is through the Mangoni, as we move up, sites like Kiki Whenua, um, we, we have to be working out and through this the, the connection between um, Maraitarata and Kiki Whenua. And some of that is a difficult to access land, some of it is you know, private ownership, but we have some key pieces um, and how we connect those together. So if, if you remember, um, councillors, the discussion about Oteira Reserve and that only been a shorter term um, pony le uh, leasing there, we've got Rangatane Park and we've got Kiki Whenua coming up. So part of this will be how this site connects into that longer term vision of reconnecting and moving through the Mangoni and part of that will be the, the, the public access and the shared pathway through there bearing in mind that there are significant cultural sites, we have to understand whether it's appropriate in those sites to have the public there. Right, thank you both. Mr Mayor. Right, back to you, Jason. All right, um, so lighting loop, Manawatu River, so back up. Now we are looking bridge to bridge, so Hiera Kotahi Bridge to um, Fitzherbert Bridge in both sides of that, so Esplanade side and the Massey side. So in terms of, I mean, I don't really need to say too much about Hiara Kotahi bridge lighting, other than in terms of the design, when we worked through this with Rangatane, for both the Massey side and Hiara Kotahi, it was appropriate because of the battles on the Mokomoko Plains um, and the loss of life over there that the lighting was considered very subtle. So that's why he why Hiara Kotahi was designed as it is. So it's a very white light, um, it's, it's lowly lit, um, it's quite subtle. It doesn't, you know, flash or there's no sound associated with it. And the, the, um, the cloak pattern that's on the Massey side too, the glow, the, the glow path is in the same kind of thing. So it's also a farm over there too, so there's animals and things like that. So we need to be, you know, cognizant of, of Massey as well. So that was all kind of done with that... Um, that kind of narrative in mind. So now we're moving on to the more highly lit, moving, interactive kind of stuff, and that's on the Victoria Esplanade side and the Fitzherbert Bridge. So that's designed to, you know, speak to the kind of fun side of things, the, you know, the summer kind of movement and stuff like that. So um, in terms of the glow path, what did we get? We got 120,000 people saw that on our Facebook post, 20,000 engagements, and we reached USA, Canada, Australia, and Europe. It was shared 518 times as one of the top five posts ever uh, for the council. So that's a $50,000, you know, bit of glow sand on the path. So you really never know what's going <laughs> to what's going to do it. Um, it could be a $10 million bridge, or it could be a $50,000 glow pattern and that, that's a big part of what we're doing in the river is we're creating these pockets of delight you know we don't want to do too much of this everywhere we want to kind of do that so that people have to come across them and I understand that sometimes we want to tell that story but sometimes we don't want to tell that story sometimes you want to leave it and let people have to go and go away and find it you know so it just creates that kind of um, that allure so if we uh, move on to what's on the Horizon. So this year we, we light the Fitzherbert Bridge. There's a budget of $1 million, um, or just under $1 million to light the bridge. Those are um, little pictures there down the bottom of those buildings that will be a kind of a similar um, element. So they're 2.4 metres by between 60 and 120 metres, or 100 metres long on each side of that bridge. Uh, and they'll form LED strips that will act as screens. So those screens, you'll be able to project video onto those screens. So they'll also connect up with the clock tower, so we'll be able to have the clock tower and the bridge um, working in the same kind of way. So the same kind of lighting and all that kind of stuff can work in on the same controllers. There's also a sound system on the bridge too. Um, so you'll be able to connect in with the lights, we'll connect in with, say, the Holly Festival, so the colour festival that they have down there, things like that. So we're kind of setting this up so that um, you can project our brand onto that bridge. 
We can have shows on that bridge at certain times of night so you can go down and experience, um, you know, like a, a light show and sound show for, you know, 35 or 40 minutes. And then it may just go back to, you know, bubbles or something like that, that, that or, or, or lights. Also, under the bridge, we'll be grazing the, the underneath of the bridge too with, with coloured lights as well. So that, uh, and of course, it's all designed to be viewed from under the bridge and from the, from the river, so you can't see anything from the top. Um, for obvious traffic safety reasons. Uh, and the year after, there's another million dollars to do interactive light sculptures along the, the Victoria Esplanade. So we're talking about um, around about 10 sculptures that will go in um, along there. So you'll be able to, say, walk on them and they'll come to light or walk past them. Uh, we haven't kind of worked through the design on that yet, but... Um, there's quite a few companies out there at the moment that are doing this kind of stuff, and there's some stuff on Cuba Street that we're experimenting with too. So um, this year we'll start looking into what that's going to kind of look like. Um, and of course we want to we want to work with Rangatane on this. We want a local flavour to a lot of this stuff too. So again, the same kind of storytelling needs to come through. Things that are really special to the Manawatu and that people will recognise as, as specifically Manawatu. Um, in all kinds of contexts. Do you have any uh, connect, uh, questions on Yes, that? I have Mr. Te Aue Aue. Um, You know how we always get in the city people that don't agree with the beautiful things we, we make and put up. What about vandalism on a lot of those lightings? Um, most of our stuff down here will be IP68 rated, so it's pretty strong same kind of stuff that we put in the square, and that's about all we can do. Um, I suspect that we're in a kind of a bit of a catch-22 phrase where we don't have enough people down there at these times at the moment to keep an eye on it, but we will do. Is, is it worth perhaps cameras, or is that too dear? I, I think we'll have people um, station. We'll, we'll have people down here at some point. Through the chair, our experience of, of cameras is, is actually really difficult to to be able to identify people through them. Um, so, although it, if we put them up, it wouldn't it might be a deterrent, but we wouldn't actually be able to catch people who've been vandalising stuff. Um, that's been our experience with Bring quite a few up. of the cameras that we've got up around the Looking place because them. we do get vandalism of some stuff. Wait, just to use the mirror. Um, Cameras they've got now are doing a lot better job than the old ones they used to have. Perhaps uh, some of ours need replacing. Just in addition to that, we, we have been working with um, Chris and Rangatane on a concept of a Rangatane Ranger. So um, somebody that would take a kind of a kaitiaki role in the river space. Uh, somebody or some people uh, that would do that. Uh, and we, I guess, in terms of how we've played this river game out, it's more of a face-to-face -face human kind of thing that we're going for down here rather than this automated kind of, you know, cameras and robots or something like that running around. Um, so we'll, we'll continue to kind of look at that and see how we might be able to work through the operational costs of that. Through you, Mr Mayor, you know, because when we go down to the showgrounds, it's a masterpiece there. So this is going to look like that. Will Rangatani be very happy? All right, thank you, Jason. And, you know, Ahimate Reserve has come a long way, so a lot of the work that we've done down there, um, we've done. Um, and that's taken on a real kind of, uh, almost like a spiritual kind of sense to it in the sense that when the Hopwoods Po came down from out of the square that was where Rangatane decided to bury the Po. It was a, a fairly uh, quiet um, but quite touching um, ceremony. Um, now the, the Rangatane Hapu are up there on the, the, the Po Whenua on the post, the tribes, uh, and the sixth tribe um, goes up in when the next financial year rolls over. Yep, the sixth Hapu, sorry, yeah goes up there, so, um, and, you know, the spring koanga's been doing really well. I think each year we're 
five, six, seven hundred more each time. So we're starting to get some momentum down there, and that park's just so busy now. Councillor Johnson. Um, Jason, sorry, do these um, programs have their own program number as Capital New? Some of them do. So if they're significant, like the lighting, they have yeah. their own program number. Okay. Tomotua Potua, the lighting has its own number. But some of these projects at Ahimate, they're small enough that we capture them under a program called Minor Works. Right. So do you, off the top of your head, know what the program number for the lighting is? Uh, 928, I believe. Okay, thank you. Councillor Harpeter. Just on the lighting, I just wanted to, as a comment, and I'm just bringing it up, um, I don't know if it's up for discussion, if it's more important to spend money on other things than the lighting, and I don't know if, that's, if we had that discussion already, but in terms of Rangatane, whether they think the lighting is really important as opposed to other things that Rangatane want to spend money on. I don't know if this discussion has been had. Well, this, the lighting loop was a, a discussion for the last 10-year plan, so we've done half of it now. I think we'd be reluctant to half-light something, encourage people into the space and then not finish it off. There are safety issues associated with that. I think that we need to um, kind of probably, unless the council just turn around and decide that they don't want to do the, the lighting anymore, we would need to to kind of just push on with that as one of our programs. Yeah, I, I just think this, the Rangatane want a lot of good things, spent for Rangatane, which is what we want as well. And I, I just wonder if the, the value or the bang for the buck, is it best spent on lighting or is it best spent on other things that Rangatane want and what we want? It's probably where I'm coming from. Um, so councillors, in your draft LTP, you have confirmed funding for the lighting loop um, going forward. Uh, if council was of a mind to review the scope or the amount of that, that's probably a matter for your LTP adoption and LTP discussions. At the moment, we are working on the premise that as the programme is in the draft and therefore approved by council that we're proceeding with the programme as it was in the 2018 LTP. Okay. Back to you, Jason. And um, this year, too, we also have the next um, entranceway will be the Albert Street entranceway. Uh, so that will be re uh, has been redesigned. You can see that concrete um, seat that sits there on the side. That's in the little grass piece um, when you get to Albert Street by the stone wall. So that um, has a tuna um, panelling through it. Uh, designed by James Molnar, who's the guy that did the uh, the wild base panels and the eel platform entranceway. So um, again, we're using that kind of design framework to keep that kind of continuity of storytelling, and also um, as a harken back to the Hokafuru Lagoon as a kind of primary spot for um, you know at, um, gathering of food um, and very special eel too in there, weren't there, Chris? Um, and uh, that'll ha be lit up as well, so that entranceway will have lighting um, in it as well, strip lighting and stuff like that, same as the Victoria Esplanade entranceway. Um, and also the, the Turner pattern will have lighting in it as well, so that'll have you know, kind of like blue strips through the Turner and things like that, so it's kind of exciting. Any questions about Albert Street? Jason, just in terms of time frame, again, what's... Um What's the estimated time frame of that? Albert Street will be later, so we'll do the Tiritia Pass site first, um, and then we'll move into Albert Street. Okay. The lighting can happen contiguously with these because they're um, you know, quite different things. Um, and just so you do know, we'll also be, um, in terms of the Victoria Esplanade side lighting, we'll be looking to cable a big tranche of that this year too so that it's ready for next year. So the cabling's in the ground. Uh, Councillor Hancock. Yeah, Jason, just uh, thank you. I just thought, uh, just in respect of that uh, location there with the lighting, there's residential on the uh, on the left hand side. Um, so, have you given some thought as to how that lighting has to be dealt with in terms of that requirement? 
Yeah, so um, whenever we do a lighting plan, um, these are all low-level LED strips and things like that, so they're really designed um, like, the, uh, like the bridge, but with less impact. They're designed for a very, very low light spill. So that's not going to impact those houses, it's just going to light up your way through. Yep. Uh, Councillor Barrett. Uh, thank you, Mr Mayor. Thanks, Jason. Um, so I was prompted by this image, but also thinking about um, Ahamate, um, in that I know Ahamate now um, has the odd vehicle on the beach um, that's probably a bit informal in terms of its presence there, and just are, are we changing um, vehicle access here, or is there still a, a cutoff that's clearly a vehicle and non-vehicular space? Uh, there's a cutoff that's a non-vehicular space. Um, we have looked at the site uh, for camper vans, so we have looked at potentially putting car parking on the other side so that we can get camper vans down there like we do at Ahimate now. Um, but I think we're doing some work with Horizons Regional Council on Riverside Drive land at the moment, and we think that would be a much more appropriate kind of other end um, for camper vans. Just because, I mean, in a sense, we've done really well with this NZMCA um, off the beaten track um, side of things. So um, anecdotally, people aren't just coming and staying at Campbell Street and then racing off to Wellington in the morning to catch the ferry. They're, they're coming down, spending a couple of days down at Ahimate and then moving on. So that's the kind of thing that we want. Um, we want people that know that they can bring their dogs, they can take, put their bikes on the back, um, and it's free, it's easy, so it's really perfect for them. Uh, thanks, I guess what I'm getting at is, is trying to understand um, the, the thinking that's going on in terms of being very clear about inviting people into these spaces, but that in most cases we aren't inviting people and their vehicles into these spaces. No. Um, this will have bollards right through it. So um, we're looking at bully bollards, which are electric, so they go down into the ground and then come up. Um, it's been a big problem here for us. We have trucks come up here and they hook the gates up and they tear them off and then drive along the river. Well, thank you, Mr. Mayor. So, yeah, definitely keeping vehicles out of here is a big one. Uh, Jason, just with talking entranceways and, and going back to um, the Esplanade, near the um, um, Esplanade Miniature Railway, when's completion of that? We're probably looking at about four weeks, so the pagoda's going up now, uh, the drainage is, the last piece of drainage is going in, and then it's just concreting straight through, and bollards. Right, okay, thank yep. you. That'll, that'll, that'll go fast now. Apologies for that too, That's, it's been a tough year for us, this one. All right, back to you. Oh, eel platform's underwater at the moment, um, but that's held up really well. So that's a good thing. We've just got to clean it off. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> I'm glad we put all that rock line in now. <laughs> um, okay, so uh, Tomotua Potua. So this is our um, kind of main piece here. Um, I believe that we have, is it the 19th of August? Um, we've just booked in the 19th of August with, with you guys. You requested a site visit for that, so um, we'll be working to that date to do a site visit with you with, uh, on Tomotua Potua. Um, so with this site, I guess this is just a, a general kind of overview of the, what you see from when you're up there looking down. You can see the Tinifetu Kitirangi there. The entranceway um, area, which is quite a busy um, and fast um, piece, and then the car park up the top. We've um, so far just been working through site constraints with uh, Rangatane and uh, the design team that we've put together. Um, and I mean, as you can imagine, on this site, the site constraints are considerable. So, even though I mean, when you look at um, uh, from off of Tomoto Apota, it looks like you're very high, but on the back end, it's probably only about 35 metres from where you start to go up to the top of it. Um, so you can see that purple area there, that's the area where we could potentially have a building, and that's it. 
up the top there. So it is fairly constrained by the geotechnical side of things, and we do have to put some rock lining in down the bottom there. Also, um, Massey University have been quite open to uh, what we might do on that farmland. So there's been some kind of consideration of that. The flat land that's available on the right as you come in through the entranceway there, so that was land that the council purchased from Higgins Family Holdings about a year and a half ago, kind of in anticipation of this project. And um, that could be, um, you know, car parking and area, you know, entranceway, we don't know what yet, but we're just kind of setting everything out so that we know what we're dealing with. And then the area there that's encircled by the kind of reddish brown dots, that's kind of an existing historic defence kind of thing there. So that's probably one section of the par site area that's kind of hasn't been um, overly, uh, I guess, harmed by, you know, taking the top off or taking dirt out or anything like that. So that's an area that we could potentially, um, you know, do some kind of significant historical kind of, re, you know, recreation stuff right there. And, of course, there's the connections through to Te Arapikiotane, the steps, and... Um, you know, um, the, the wooded and forested area that's down there too. So also how we connect it up to uh, Hira Kotahi and to the, the kind of entranceway there too. So those are kind of key things, and Massey are quite open to us um, coming around through there um, on both sides, um, from under the bridge and along the side down there as well. Also, um, we have been... I'm meeting with them about the botanical garden too, so there's opportunity here that Tomotua Potua could somehow tie into that botanical garden work as well. So I'm going to um, catch up with Mitch Murdoch um, this week and just have a chat about that. Um, what do we use that farmland for? Does it, you know, so there have been some ideas that have come through from some of the Rangatane representatives on the group um, that have said, you know, what if we did some kind of traditional kaianga or something like that down there? Is that me? So that's, um, that's where we're at at the moment, just at site constraints. Um, so far, this is kind of where we're at, early co-engagement. Uh, our councillor workshop that we've done, we've got money in the 10-year plan. Um, you'll see the indicative budgets that are in the report, which are quite different. Um, and we've kind of based those on similar buildings uh, that have kind of taken place over the last couple of years. Uh, Wellington Waterfront, um, stuff like that. Co-design and co-engagement, so we've established a development plan team, so that's with Rangatane, PNCC landscape designers, and we've got Alan Titchener from Auckland there, who's, you know, um, te ao Māori designer, um, and we're looking uh, to engage an architect now as well. Uh, so we'll go through a procurement process for that. Um, in terms of co-engagement, I believe this is the first time I think this has happened in the country, so I don't know of anywhere where, where people have co-engaged with the public, and so that has its own challenges. Um, for one, we have um, Rangatane, who have a really special site of cultural significance, and they know exactly how it should be and what it should look like. On the one hand, on the other hand, we have Reserves Act, we have a public, we have people that want to have input and rangatane aren't opposed to that. So how do we kind of balance that kind of cultural tikanga out with how we engage with our public? And so the way that we've come up with that is that we will, we will design the park um, with rangatane, and then we will engage three landscape architects, um, appropriate ones. We will then um, get them to work with Rangatane. They will, um, like we did with our first series of designers, uh, they'll spend time with Rangatane down at the Marae, and then they will be tasked with developing a concept. So we'll have three concepts, and we will consult on three appropriate concepts. So we can legitimately consult on the building um, without necessarily going into an area where... Um, there's something that's culturally inappropriate there that's not going to work and it's going to cause kind of tension. So that's how we've kind of managed to come up with a, I guess, a procurement and legitimate kind of consultation process that's going to engage the public, it's going to be legitimate, but it's also going to um, 
work in with how Rangatane want to see this um, roll out as well. Um, and so, you know, site constraints we've done, uh, scope of works and procurement, so we're just de developing the procurement plan now, and uh, at some point we'll go out for expressions of interest and be asking people to, um, put, you know, put themselves forward as architectural firms to see who, who we want to deal with. So procure an architect through to concept design. Um, so Rangatane now have the site constraints, and I think another thing that we need to be really cognizant of is that now that we're at a, a certain point in this, Rangatane now need to go back to their people and say, well, is this, what, is this what you guys want? So there's that process to happen through July as well. Uh, and then in July we'll be looking at doing a communications plan for the development plan as well. Um, and hopefully looking to get a draft up and running for early next year, late this year, early next year. And consultation. Um, questions? I'll, I'll start with one, um, Jason. It actually came, came last night at the, um, at the mili Military Heritage Lecture which um, on the Māori Battalion Hall, which uh, one of Wiramu's fellow um, trustees, George Kiriyama, um, presented and they spoke about Tamatawa Potawa but also it's dual naming with Anzac Park and um, those that don't know it was the World War I dedication to um, city soldiers but especially Māori um, and the Māori Pioneer Battalion and they didn't want to see that lost um, and they understand the, the, the huge significance um, with Tamatawa Potawa but um, it's always sort of been acknowledged that there would be some element of Anzac Park recognition there as well. So I would hope that isn't lost um, in everything that's going on. Um, and that actually came from, from George. So um, I'll okay. leave that with you. Thanks. Right, um, Councillor Beatty. Uh, thank you, Mr Mayor. Thanks, Jason. Um, Jason, um, I'm a bit concerned that the first year's budget for this is 60,000. That's the 21-22 year. Mm -hmm. And when you go through that list of, um, you know, you're talking about landscape architects, you're talking about consultants and consultation, I, I don't think that's enough money for the first... Well, that's 60,000 that we've, we've just spent. So we've got 150,000 next year to take it through to concept design? Uh, no, because the 22, 23 years... Oh, I got the years wrong, so I was, sorry. Yeah, so if you've just spent that, what are you spending this year? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I've got the years wrong. So, oh, so this year what... that we're just finishing off is 60, okay, and next year sorry, we've got so, 150 okay, to... So it's, yep, okay, that's right. I was just concerned that you didn't have enough money. Yep. Um, but because of the nature of what we're doing in terms of using three architects, um, we, you know, we might be pushing that budget, but we'll, we'll see how it goes. It's a, it's a fairly hefty budget just to get us through to concept. Yep. Yep. Uh, Councillor Dennison. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Just in regards to the um, approach of getting the three architects to do the concepts, is that usual with some of the urban design that we have and city streetscapes and stuff? It seems to me very excessive. But is that, is that consistent with the other approaches for other works? Um, not other works that we've done here, but it's not inconsistent with what other people have done around the country on similar kind of projects. Um, the reason being, this is a really special site and we want to choose three, you know, we want to, we want to, to get the, the right kind of, the right kind of building. So we'll be paying those architects to sit down with Rangatane and to come up with a concept. Um, they will then have to go back and refine that based on what Rangatane come back with again. And then we'll be able to sit down and a panel of people will make a call on, on which one is, is appropriate. And that architect will then Okay, just take so a step if, further with the design. So is that being designed with these concepts that we've outlined so far, or that kind of, is it blue sky? Well, I'm just, I'm wondering what sort of budget are they building for? Like is it a, is it, 
I want to understand when they come with the designs and then they come back to the table and say, oh, this is going to be X million and this is this million. And I just want to I know, know what, they'll, they'll what be the scoped. mix is around yeah. the expectation and where we're starting, where we might end up. So um, these architects will all have a fairly, um, like a standard kind of scope that we would put together. That scope will include a price. So we'll have a price in there of, I would say, around about $10 million for the building. Um, and that gives us a similar type of building that we know has been built for that kind of money. Well, actually, they're, they're closer to seven and a half million, but on today's construction budgets, they're probably closer to 10. Um, and uh, they will also have a scope that is based on their ability to um, work with Te Ao Māori Design, uh, work in a kind of whānau order framework with people. They'll also have to show that they're able to work with our designers that we've already got. So, um, and that they understand, have an understanding of te reo and tikanga Māori. And so there's a, a fairly uh, strong scope and slant on who we're looking for. Uh, so, councillors, back in 2000, when we did the Lido 2000 Plus project, we used this approach. Um, we did quite wide, extensive um, community consultation and we came up with the outputs that we wanted and the elements that the community wanted to include. Whilst we put some consideration of um, price into that, we didn't want to constrain the, uh, the, the thinking of the designers and we had three people that did exactly this. We um, paid them to put together concepts to come and present those concepts and based on that we chose the one that best fitted uh, the outcomes that we wanted for the community. And so, um, just I'm just getting clearer again. Sorry. The so the architect is for the building, not so much developing the elements around the park as a whole. Is that, am that I now correct on that? Yeah, that's correct. So um, we have a landscape architect that we've already engaged, uh, and that landscape architect, because Tomoto Apoto will essentially function as a type of hub for this river park. That landscape architect we handpicked because they have a really good understanding of the work in the river. They know where all these places are. They've worked really well with Rangatane in the past. So they will essentially uh, manage the architect and that architect will have to fit in with the, the overall design of the park. Uh, but we need an architect to design a, a fairly iconic feature up here. We need a good architect. Okay. That That's my questions for now. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Councillor Naylor. Thank you, and thanks, thanks for the report. Um, just looking at um, the financial constraints on page 13 and the um, shortfall that's identified there from our um, budgets of about 3.4 to 4.4 .4 million, what is um, the thinking at this stage of how that shortfall might be met? Um, I, I would say if we're going on traditional thirds models, the council, uh, we would have to come to either an annual plan or a 10-year plan um, with uh, some recommendations on funding. Okay, so you'll, you'll have to stump up a third, I, I think, realistically. If we're going to go third, 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 if it's a $15 million project, you're going to need $5 million. We've got 1.6 in there now, um, so you've got a shortfall of about three and a half. And, and so I'm understanding that that's based on assumption of an a third, a third, a third. Is that a council policy or is that just an example of what we've done on a sports field? Um, it's an example of what we can get. Um, it's generally how the funders want to see it, see it work. So um, if you, I guess if the council's not stumping up money, it's going to be pretty hard for us to, to, to kind of get matching funds from... OK, so given that we've just confirmed our LTP last week or the week before, um, and that we've been told we can't change that. Mm -hmm. um, is this actually workable within the um, budgets that we have set? Well, I, what I want to say first before we get into that is this is my estimate of where I think we're at. We need to get into detailed design and scheduling before we go anywhere near an LTP on this. This really has to be nailed down to the, to the nut and bolt. Um, before we go anywhere near it. So th I'm just giving you a heads up at the moment where I think a project like this of this scale would end up, just so that you know. But we're not going to be in that position for some years yet. Yep. Okay, thanks. 
Um, Councillor Johnson. Uh, thanks, Mr Mayor. Um, Jason, um, I don't know if I've missed a step, in which case, apologies if I have, but from what I remember, um, the last presentation we had about this, we had quite a lot of sort of blue skies thinking about possible projects and uses for the site. Now we're talking about a building, but I'm not clear what, what purpose the building would have, what function it would have, what type of, which of those, you know, uh, variety of ideas that were, that were passed by us, I think, at the previous meeting, yep. um, has a conclusion been reached about which one of those to go for? I'm, I'm just not, not, not understanding completely. how we can go out to ask architects to design something. I'm not clear what they're designing. Not completely, and that's why we haven't procured the architect yet. So it's um, incumbent now for Rangatane to make sure that the types of thinking that we've got here are going to fit with what their people are thinking. And so what that's looking like and what came through most strongly from yourselves, from stakeholders and from Rangatane, was that the building would be a marae slash civic centre type thing with a, a kind of a commercial kitchen, like the Farewaka on Wellington waterfront, something like that, um, that could double as a convention kind of area or something like that. Information, cultural type, um, type centre. Okay, well that's helpful because I mean, did, has that been canvassed before? Because that's the first I've heard, honestly. Well, that was what came through from the workshop with you guys. That's what I... It came through from stakeholders, it came through from Rangatane. Uh, I mean, if I can just engage in conversation, if mm. that's allowed. I've um, already been told to be quiet uh, once today, so I've <laughs> been careful. <laughs> well, is, uh, we can come to comments um, at the end, but is, is there any more questions? Are you teasing out questions? Is that... um, I guess what, that my question is... At what point was a decision made about what type of building would be there? Because this is the first I'm hearing now that Jason's talking about it there. My last recollection, and, you know, I may have missed something, is that lots of options were discussed. And I'm just not sure at what point the type of building was confirmed. And has that been run by us already, or, or are we just hearing it for the first time now? This is the first time you're hearing of it now. Yeah. So it was also partially to do with the site constraints. Obviously, the other building was a five-star hotel, um, and that isn't, just isn't going to go up there. Um, and uh, the Rangatane people that are on our design team were, you know, didn't want to see a five-star hotel up there either. Um, so the thinking around this kind of... I, I guess it's not completely nailed down. Cultural centre, information-type centre... Um, cafe type, you know, that type of area. And, and also I think we did really put that back to Rangatane to, um, for some direction on that, but you are right, it's, it's, we, it's getting teased out. I think if you look at the Fariwaka, um, the moving feast, Fariwaka space and, and on, the, on the waterfront in Wellington is, uh, is a good example of um, modern day marae, um, meeting space, cultural information space, food space. Um, if I can draw Council's attention to 2.7, which is a communications and an engagement plan uh, for this site, which is intended in August 2021, that we will be um, developing a stakeholder engagement plan and a public engagement plan, um, and it will be it, plans will be created to seek feedback on Rangatani and Council's inspiration, aspirations. So obviously um, that, that document still needs to put, um, be put together. Um, at the moment, Rangatani uh, need to go back to their people. Um, there's been representation of uh, Rangatani, but they need to make sure that that reflects what they want. We've obviously, if there's some feedback from councillors, and, and together those things come together in terms of what we will then be engaging with stakeholders and community. That, that hasn't happened yet. Mm. What uh, Jason is signalling here is of the things that were originally put forward, some of those things are probably not feasible at this stage. Could I suggest, and, and moving on from Councillor Johnson's um, questions to you, that maybe that comes back to us at some stage as well? Because oh, we'd be planning a workshop with you guys towards the end of the year. A briefing, yeah, yep. a briefing, briefing. Yep. All right, um, Deputy Mayor. 
Thank you, Mr Mayor. I just want to um, clarify the process in following on from Councillor Johnson's question. So from the, um, from the workshop, which was, I think as she described it, the blue sky thinking, um, where lots of different ideas were put out there, the, my understanding is then that staff with, in partnership with representatives from Rangitane have, have considered some of those ideas and some of them have been pulled off the table. Um, it's not workable. Being not workable, good phrase at the moment. Um, and so there is some concept developed around what, what is still on the table and that concept would then come back to the next... Yes briefing by the sounds of it as it's been labelled. Yep. So the, co the comments you're making today around specifics are still just ideas that are on the table. There's actually no concept as such. That, that's correct. And you're just talking about the building here too. So remember that the other ideas that you guys brought forward around walkways and connectivity and that, that's all in here too. So the building is just one of those elements. So a lot of the stuff that was considered on that day is still in this plan. But I guess I just want, yep. I'm just clarifying that even the building that you're referring to is still just an idea that's on the table at this stage. Exactly, yes. Thank you. Councillor Beatty. Um, thank you, and sorry to harp on about this, Jason, but I, I, I need to understand this process in my head, especially as it is quite a considerable amount of money. So from that, just following on from the Deputy Mayor, so there is a building in your head or some something that structure there. structure in your so are then are you then going out to architects it's not just in my head yeah no no <laughs> and i did admit, I, I, yeah. yeah so are, are you then going out to architects to get what's translated into a a concept design into a concept design okay so this is where i'm getting concerned about the budgets because how can we go out to architects? Like in the, in the in our budgets at the moment, we've only got 1.4. Yep. A and even if you go through a three-way split, you're still looking at 5.2 million or 4.2 million. 4.2 million. Yep. So, obviously, when we go out to, we will set some requirements. That's right. Yes. So we can only set those requirements in our budget envelope. Yep. So how do we get, you know, so I will not be, if you're going out, I would not be expecting to have a building for $9 million if we don't have $9 million budget. So how do we close that gap or how do we do this? Because we, we've got to, it's got to be an honest process. Yeah, well, Councillor, I think what the officers are trying to do is, and, 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 in consultation with our partners, Rangitane, has is, is, is come to us and say, this is some options. This is the option around the envelope of what we've got, which is the 1.4, and put that out to a third, a third, a third. These are some other options that could be done with some more, um, with some more investment. So I think we've got to go through that process. I mean, whether that's spending some money, whether that's a, a, a paper to us, I'm unsure. I, I don't think that we'll be in a position to make any calls on this until we're probably pretty getting pretty close to the next 10 year plan anyway. Um, but I mean, there's no reason that we couldn't use the existing money that's in there and go a third, a third, a third, and phase out some of the other work that's in there, and maybe the building doesn't get built. Right? So. Those would be options that we'd come to you with. I, I suppose my concern is, if I, if I can make a comment, is that you, there's $150,000 that's going to get spent. And I don't want to come back and find that we've spent $150,000 and we've now, you know, the, we've got a building of, of $9 what? million that we can't fund. So, well, I guess my question to you is how do, how do you kind of want to do this because we, we've got to, I guess we've got a development plan here in a sense that we're, we're develop, that we're putting together. We've been to you with workshops and, and things like that. So we've kind of been 
I guess putting it out there that this is, is going to be a fairly significant project, it, the timing is definitely awkward. It would have been better if we had a, a much better indication of what it's going to cost before the 10-year plan, but we just didn't have, uh, we're just not in that position. So, so, is this a question? Well, um, yeah. Jason's asked me a question, so <laughs> am, can, no, can this I... Is fairly, this is fairly fluid. Yeah. Okay, can, can I just... Look, I don't want to dampen this project at all, but I just want to make sure that we... Unfortunately, we're bound by process. Yes. So I think there's a step missing that from that workshop that we went to... And that's what I was trying to allude to. Today, and I just think we just need to yeah. perhaps have a... I th yeah, and we can do that in comments. Yeah, so, yeah. But, um, I, I, and I'm hearing you, and I think Councillor Naylor was going there, and I think Councillor Denison was going there as well, and so was Councillor Johnson. So I think the officers are getting the... Getting the and and councillors, just on this, um, in the LTP, we, we've put a, an, an amount of money for de developments at the site. Um, as we work through, then the relative um, expenditure on that, on elements of it, um, and the building may, as, as Jason said, this is a long-term aspirations we asked you for and our stakeholders for. There's nothing to say in a single LTP that the commitment that we've currently made is for all of that. It may be that the council contribution is um, some of the early contribution around the enabling factors like stabilisation, like roadways and those types of things and some of the other stuff um, would be based on that expenditure first, or it could be that that investment is, is into some of the features. That, I think, also needs to be part of the consultation with the community in terms of the relative importance of what were many aspirations for this site, and at some stage we're going to have to put some prioritisation around uh, which of those goes first. All right. Are there any further questions? Um, uh, Danielle. On a completely different matter, um, just on page 14, 2.22, the reserve management plan. So are we looking to um, develop that after March 2022? Because I'm just mindful we haven't had a formal plan there for a while. Yeah, I, I think that um, we shouldn't really engage in a reserve management plan until we've got a good idea of what we're going to do up there. Um, because if I get that, I just want to know, are we doing that after March 2022? Yes, yep. Thank you, that's all. Um, questions? Um, sorry, Councillor Denison, you had your... Uh, thank you, Mr Mayor. Just in regards to the recommendations, so when we're acknowledging the process and timelines, I just wanted to understand, so when we're saying that we've got a development plan, is that still in concept or is that starting to be finalised now? So, so what's, what is the development plan? Is it still conceptual? Yeah. Is it, is it quite detailed now? We've got buildings here and so here. The develop the idea of the development plan is it tells us exactly what we're going to do and where. But it doesn't give us the detailed design to say how, we'll get, how we're going to do it exactly. And it doesn't tell us necessarily how we're going to fund it. So you'll see that part of this is to also produce a funding and phasing plan as well. So we would come back to you and say, well, this is how we might... This is how we might fund this over how many years. Okay, and has the development plan been adopted by this committee? Uh, it will be, yes. We haven't done it yet, that's what we're doing now. And so I'm just lost around the time then still around needing to approve this recommendation. So if we approve this recommendation, does that activate the 150,000 spend on three architects for a building that I'm not sure we've adopted in the development plan? Yes, the other option is that we actually do some form of workshop with you guys before we procure the architects. Okay, thank so you. So we come back to the committee before we, or we workshop with, with the committee before we procure the architects, we go through that side of things and then we go from there. I personally think that would be a better idea, um, just to get everybody back onto the onto the walker and the rowing in the same direction. Yep. Um, Councillor Naylor. Yeah, thank you. Just um, continuing, I guess, trying to find some clarity with what the pathway is forward. Um, you, we, we've, some councillors have talked about um, the blue sky thinking that we had and all those ideas. Um, and then you mentioned that some things were not feasible or workable, um, and so they've dropped off and then we're sort of 
talking about potentially a mm -hmm. cultural centre or building. Some of the ideas like the gondola and canoes back and forth from one side of the river to the other, yep. those kinds of things. At the moment, I don't know if they are some of the things that are not workable or not feasible or if they're still up for consideration. Um, at what point uh, is there information that could be shared about what's in and out um, or what's still on the table and how what the process will be to define what the priorities are or what stays on the table, yep. um, what that process might look like? So if we're going to workshop um, the if we're going to workshop with you before we go out for procurement, um, we could come in um, with a piece of that too to say, you know, the gondola, what, why that is or isn't in at this stage. Um, the waka is more of an activity, so we would see that as a separate thing to a development plan. Necessarily, this is more about what we're building there. So um, we can come up with a, um, a series of things that you know, all of the things that, that came through and go through where they sit. So we could do that at that workshop. So as a suggestion um, through you, um, Mr Chair, is if with the agreement of the committee, perhaps what we could do at, at that workshop is invite the Rangatane Working Party. Um, they came and presented um, on their, um, their results back in November to come back now and say, where are we at, where are we at, with things and um, you know to provide that lens and not just perhaps an officer's lens to um, to councillors but that, that wider lens because this has been a collaborative and collective process to work through and some of the aspirations obviously of the different parties um, may or may not be feasible but I think what we really want to say is that it's not just a, a single group or a single person work on this, there is a collective, there is some discussions and perhaps collectively um, with your agreement we share those thoughts of both parties. Yeah, I agree. Thank um, you. So, Councillor Hancock. Yeah, uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Mayor. Look, uh, just a very, very quick question: um, Is this is this project being project managed? Like, do we have an understanding of the interdependencies and timelines and everything else like that at this point in time? Not at this stage. We'll get through the um, development plan first um, and the funding and, and sort all of that kind of stuff out, and then we look to go to detailed design, uh, whatever that looks like, and project management then. Yeah, would that actually include kind of sort of the, the funding arrangements and everything else like that? Because I think all that needs to be knitted into, yeah. into the project itself, so we've got a very, very clear understanding. Through the Chair, we, we're actually doing a delivery plan at the moment for the next three years. And um, so, so this, along with everything else, will be wrapped into how we deliver and, and when we get PMs, cost consultants, all of that sort of stuff involved to make sure that we do things robustly. PMs are project managers. Oh, sorry, they? yes, sorry. PMs are project managers. We just need to know what we're going to do first. Mr. Tiawiawi. Mr. Mayor, I'm getting worn out listening to all this cordial. But um, can I say, all will be revealed at the workshop we're going to have. So save your questions, <laughs> million dollar questions for them. Kia ora. Okay, are there any further questions of the officers? Um, okay, all right. Thank, thank you, Jason, um, and, and thank you, Cathy. I, I just, first of all, I just want to acknowledge the work that's gone on both in uh, the uh, river, uh, the uh, Manawatu Awa uh, framework, and uh, and also uh, Tomoto Apotawa Anzac Park development, um, I think it's quite exciting. Uh, clearly, there are some questions that need to be um, answered around the funding uh, plan of this, but. Um, I, like Councillor Beatty, don't want to pour cold water over it in the sense that um, there is some good work going on. Uh, we'll, we'll, um, we'll vote on this one first and then we'll have to go back and do the other one. Uh, but I'm quite happy to, before we go to comments, um, to move this. Um, but it is coming back, obviously, to us. Um, seconded by um, Deputy Chair. Um, and... Councillor Johnson, are you commenting on this? Yeah, OK, I'll come to you in a second. So, councillors, just on this, uh, it is a unique 
it is a unique, Tamatoa Potoa Anzac Park is a unique project, and I do think um, the co-governance and design, and I, and I say design because there has been quite a lot of work going on in the background, clearly there's still some more to be done around um, uh, picking up what, what it looks like. Um, it needs a funding plan, and that was being teased out by a lot of the questions, and that can be op optionalised. Uh, and it could be as simple as what we're doing is, is funding the enabling works uh, without a building, and the building comes second. It could be staged. Um, that cultural structure, I think we need to be led a little bit, um, certainly by Rangatane in this space. Uh, there's no set time frames, so we can, it can roll to a, another LTP, because I know some are getting um, uh, uh, the numbers that are in programs at the moment um, are there. So there's not millions more there at the moment. Um, I would like to um, signal my personal support for it, but also would like to hope that councillors do as well. Um, this, is a, this is a really significant project um, for Rangatane and quite a cultural icon um, and, and place of huge significance as well. So I will go now to other comments. Um, Councillor Johnson first. Um, yeah, I think, um, and some of the questioning has probably um, brought this out, I think that um, we just were a wee bit surprised with where things had got to a bit fast, because obviously most of us haven't been involved in the uh, discussions between staff and Rangatani, which have been operational. And I suppose, uh, so that's one thing. Um, and um, the other surprise and bit that's not quite sitting well for me is that I don't quite see how we can go out for a design for a, a much increased budget when we haven't approved the budget. It seems like we've got the cart before the horse. So that's also not sitting that well with me either. So we've, we've got 1.6 million in the budget at the moment, um, but yet, if I understood correctly, and it, and it was a bit hard to get the information out, we would be going out to architects for a design for, um, you know, three or four times what we had budgeted for. So I, I think that if we're going to, um, if we're all going to be brought along with this and feel uh, in control of the process, we've got to have more sharing of information. I know that this meeting only happens, you know, every six months or so, and, and there's probably been a lot of work gone in between times, but where we haven't uh, been kept informed of where things have got to, uh, that's how I think we end up in a situation like we've got today where we've suddenly got a whole lot of information that we, you know, is not quite adding up for us. So um, I, I do think it's important to say that, you know, I, I think we're all on board in terms of endorsing aspiration and wanting to get, you know, the best and most appropriate solution and uh, development for Rangatani out of this. But also it's not an open-ended budget. It's not a process where we can just say, well, whatever, and we'll find the money, you know? So um, we, we've got to balance those things, and I think we've all got to be brought along on the journey. Otherwise, um, you know, like none of us wants to be too discouraging at this point. I certainly don't. But at the same time, it does concern me when I hear we're going out for expressions of interest from architects when for a, a project that, you know, I actually had no understanding of where the money's going to come from. So I guess those are my concerns. And, I, you know, as I say, not wanting to be discouraging, but we've got to be brought along. And, and the, if there are lots of steps missing on the way and we just, you know, go from here to here, uh, six months later, it, it's, it's hard to keep up. Councillor Denison. Thank you, Mr Mayor. I, I'm, ex I'm excited about the development plan, but... I, I do feel like we have missed a step. I think the detail in the report is still fairly light, in fact, to the point where I still couldn't get the parallels that we had jumped to the architect was for a building of that sort of um, dollar figure, and yet I, I wasn't quite sure the, the purpose or how the priority come about. And, uh, and whether or not we can, why our meeting schedule might be six monthly, whether we do not work together in a more workshop setting to get up to up to speed and understand where some of these proposals have come 
um, I think that would be helpful. The other thing I think would be helpful for the public record is actually have some of the imagery and, and ideas to actually tell the story in the report. I, the report's quite light when we consider what we covered with all the, everything else going on in the pictorial um, presentation. And, um, and, you know, there's a lot going on. I even comment on the lights. I wasn't sure that we were going to that look and feel for the Esplanade pathway and the lights. Um, I think they look cool, but I wasn't aware of it going to that scale is the point. And when we've got that element of surprise for the decision makers for the city, I think there's probably a gap um, just, just going off in two different ways where I'd love it to be more aligned. So I just that, say that more generally with the overall presentation. But in future, I would love more detail in the report so it's not coming as a surprise to be updated. Um, I don't necessarily have a concern around the dollar figure, but I'd love to have it in the LTP, and so I do concur with Councillor Beatty and Johnson around wanting to make sure that our processes are right. But um, yeah, I think probably the next best thing, the suggestion of a workshop has been offered, I think we should take it up as a joint opportunity, um, and then if we can progress it as much as we can uh, thereafter, I'm into it. But um, that, that'd probably be my comments for now. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Uh, Councillor Beatty. Um, most as um, Councillor Dennison and Johnson have said, but um, when we did Linklater Park, we did sort of a, I thought we'd sort of follow the same process. We had a sort of a workshop and we were given, we had all these ideas about what we were, what we wanted or possibilities. And I thought sort of after we did the workshop, I would have some visual, which I haven't got, of the you know, the ideas that have taken back to the committee and, and through consultation with Rangatani and the staff. So I sort of thought we'd have something that I don't have a problem if there is a building there for eight million. Well, I do when we have to come to pay for it. But I would like to see the project staged. Like, you know, they, there was mention about roading getting up there. There's other things there. So there's nothing about the... I can't see the whole picture of what's going there. I suppose that's what it is. And if we have to stage it, then that money that we've already got in the budget may have to be used at that stage and then we go out to do a big fundraiser for, for a really good building up there for what you know we all really want. So I think that's what's missing is we haven't got the whole plan and I think we're just, I think we're just out of step. Councillors, just before, uh, I've got a couple of others in the queue here. On the 19th of August, we're going to do a site visit, um, and there is an opportunity to have another extraordinary meeting um, to, to perhaps bring back some of this, um, some of this work, because um, I'm sure the, the other comments are going to be in a similar vein. Councillor Harpeter. Um, on the similar vein, I just suppose when we, we do go through this process, we do expect to do a needs assessment before we do anything else. But we did have this session, which was a workshop with Rangatane, which was really well appreciated. We did hear what we all agreed on at that meeting, but we didn't come back together to then go through the next process. So I suppose when we are going to look at a building, we want to know what the needs are for that building. And I suppose that's what the missing link is. We don't know what the needs will be for the building. What's the community going to be using it for? What is Rangatane going to be using the building for? For the building? And that's what I suppose we don't understand. And that's what probably where we're coming from, to know what the building's going to be used for going forward. Do we need to know? That's probably where we... What, what the what is, the how is going forward. That's what we don't understand and and that's what I think the missing link is for some of us. Thank you. But I do support the concept. Councillor Dingwell. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Um, I'm, I can hear the concerns of, of um, uh, my fellow colleagues here around not knowing um, what it is that we're actually looking at here exactly, and, and not knowing how much it's going to cost us in the future. But for me, I see that budget as being a placeholder, to be honest. I see that as being um, a starting point, because we did go to um, you know, Rangatane, and we did say, give us all your ideas. We did say, what is your blue, 
blue sky thinking. Um, and so um, I find it really interesting now because I feel like a lot, a lot of what we're saying here is we're wanting a bit more of, you know, the te ao Māori way of doing things, of, you know, that, that, that um, free discussion, um, as opposed to this colonial system of, you know, um, this is, these are the plans that we have to do and, and, and there is a steps in, um, that we have to follow before we can do it. But for me, um, that I feel like that budget is just a placeholder and I'm, uh, I'm really interested to see what the options um, are before we even decide things because this, this is just, for me, an update of where we're at. Um, so I'm quite keen to carry on with this and if it means another workshop, then sure. Um, but actually, if they are looking at a building, however they, the, the building ends up being, is going to be a benefit to this community anyway. Um, and if we've got three architects telling us, you know, three different concepts, that is something that we can decide on at a later date. And if it ends up costing more, you know, that's, that's a decision we can make later down the track. So I'm quite happy to support where we're at, where, where we're at now. Councillor Naylor. I think, so look, I think most of what I was thinking has already been said by others, so I won't repeat it, but I, I do um, want to acknowledge the work that's been done, and, um, and whilst a lot of it's aspirational, I mean, that's how we get something that's going to be amazing in the future. So I don't, I mean, obviously the process isn't tidy, and we'll, this is a new process, this is a new way of working, and I think we kind of have to accept that that's a little bit how it's going to be. Um, um, but I do wonder, and I think the Mayor, um, Mr Mayor, you've already suggested perhaps an extraordinary meeting, and I was thinking um, perhaps in sh to ensure that we're all in, in the waka together, it might be important for us to make sure that we're talking more often rather than less often. I do wonder if once every six months perhaps isn't quite often enough for this committee to meet. In terms of getting the traction we want and the understanding of where we're heading um, so that, that we are, are sort of all on board. So I would certainly encourage, obviously I look forward to the workshop, but I also wonder if consideration of perhaps the meetings of this committee being perhaps more than twice a year might be um, an advantage, at least um, in the initial f phases, so that we get an understanding of the way that we're going to work and look at how we can do that most constructively. Uh, Mr Whaipu. Uh, thank you, Mr Chair. Um, just firstly, just want, want to acknowledge Jason and the team and the wonderful work that they've been doing um, in partnership with us um, in the trenches at the operational level. So ngā mihi nui kia koe, Jason, ko te koto tima, me to tira. Um, for me, I understand where everyone's coming from and it's equally a very weird process for us. I don't want to make this sound any sort of like it's negative or condescending, but we were told that you wanted to be led by Rangitani. You wanted to hear what the aspirations were, what are they, and we presented those to you. And then following that, we established the Rangitani Working Party. And then we shortlisted the long list. And then we brought that shortlist to the um, working group for them to now engage in the process. What's equally weird for us is that we learned that through this process, through the consultation stakeholder engagement process, that the public get to have an opinion on what happens up there as well. So we'll go through this process. We'll ask for a marae, but if the public don't want it, where does that now land at the decisions of this council? So that's equally a weird process for us as well. So the other part to it too is that there are cultural components or considerations. For instance, everyone would know all freezing works face the sun, uh, so does the marae. But if somebody goes, oh, I'd rather it orientate south. How does that now impact on that decision? So what we've done is we've got a short list of ideas from that very, very long list of ideas. A lot of them are off the table and we're taking those ideas to some designers to go through the next step process, which hopefully it's not going to culturally impact on 
what it is what we want to see up there. So it's a, it's a catch-22. Equally, I, I resonate with everyone that we're, we're learning to understand the function of this committee as well. And we're also learning how to work within the processes um, which have already been developed in isolation from us. So we are, I guess, um, all learning how to do this together. And yeah, so um, yeah, that's my comment. Kia ora Danielle. Thank you. Um, there's two issues, obviously, the process issue, and that's something that can be addressed. Um, Chris has said a lot of what I was going to say. I get a, a sense that there's a perception that this is all about rangitāni. This isn't actually all about rangitāni. This is creating a great space and a great facility for the city of Palmerston North. Jason's just showed the work that rangitāni and the council have been doing. Um, you can't put a price on that in terms of what it's doing for our community, getting them out and about and walking, getting them learning about our history. Um, everywhere I go now, I get comments from councils, from other iwi, from the general public about how dynamic and how great a place it is to come to Palmerston North for a holiday. And a lot of that work is the great work that you've done as councillors, but through our treaty partnership, bringing to life our past sites and a lot of other things that we're doing in the uh, city is making um, the city the great place to be. I think of the work that's going on at Te Ahua Tūranga and, you know, it's probably going to blow your mind some of the mahi toy that's going to be created in that space. And it's, it's great and I feel very proud to be part of Palmerston North now when I go to other places to hear how everybody wants to come to our little part of the world. And so sometimes you do have to have a bit of faith in us because our tikanga is a little bit different. And um, I know you're accountable to the ratepayers and I understand that, but um, you've got to learn about our tikanga as we're learning about your tikanga. And I'm very confident that together we can get to an outcome that is going to be great for us as Rangitani, for you as the city, and for our people of, of Palmerston North and wider Papa Oya. So, um, you know, I'm very much in favour of us getting along and processes, like I said, we can tidy up. Nā mihi. Councillor Bowen. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Um, I think Mr Fyapu probably summed that up when he said we're acknowledging the weird process that we're in. Um, this is, it's messy, as Danielle said, it's, a, it's learning for, for all of us. And I, I don't feel very comfortable um, with the uncertainty around you know, budget lines and programme plans and programme numbers and where do things sit. And of course I don't, because that's where I sit. Um, but I'm hearing from our partners that there's elements of that that you don't feel comfortable with. And that is the nature of the journey that this committee and the Kawanata is taking us into, is that we're learning to do this together. I think there's complexity of co-governance at the same time as co-operationally working these things through. I think some of that's what's come through today is that you know, not everybody has all of the information and I think there's been some really sensible and practical um, ideas put forward about better information sharing so that we learn to work in this way that doesn't end up with surprises in the chamber, which, um, from my worldview, is not where I want to be. Um, surprises tend not to work very well. So um, I think there are ways we can fix this, and, and looking forward to us doing that, working, continuing to walk in friendship and work in partnership, um, and happy to acknowledge the process and the timelines for getting us there. All right, councillors, I'll sum up as right a reply. Look, I, it's a new process. I don't think it's a weird process. I just think it's a new process. And uh, I, I personally don't have too many problems with it because it's going to get caught. You know, we're gonna, this stuff is going to come back to us. I suppose what the clear signal is to our officers is perhaps don't go jump out to the expressions of interest to the architects straight away. Perhaps come back to us. Um, and we've got an opportunity to do that on the perhaps the 19th of August round a, uh, a site visit and another extraordinary meeting. I think like Councillor Nanaila said, perhaps we should be meeting a little bit more often. And uh, when I discuss the work schedule, I want to widen the scope if possible. I ask the officers to look at perhaps widening the scope of terms of reference, which will probably mean we may need to meet um, quarterly rather than um, biannually. But look, we've started the process. It, 
it sort of is what it is to a certain extent. Um, we, we, I think we've done some good work, um, and I think we're going to do some great work going forward. So um, if I can ask you to support this, um, and we'll be looking to schedule another meeting um, to capture at the next stage. So if you could vote, please, uh, committee members. We have got there, six votes, four, none against. Thank you, councillors. Um, right, we'll move to number um, eight, and we've already had the um, update, uh, and this is around uh, the update on the joint working on reserves between the Rangatane on Manawatu and the council. Uh, the committee resolves to note the verbal update. Um, look, I'll look to move that, um, seconded by Deputy Chair. Um, in that, I just want to acknowledge the, the officer's work and Rangatane's work as well. Um, if you look at the projects there, the Turutia Pa, which um, I think is a fantastic um, initiative and, and site, and you've seen a lot of the videos and a lot of the photos from, from there. And again, uh, like Danielle spoke about, we are getting acknowledged um, for that tourism, that visitor appeal, um, and the Pa site has a, has a lot to do with that as well. Uh, the Ruahine village um, uh, site um, and, and the great work that's gone on at that part of the pathway is fantastic. Uh, Marae Terata, um, the wetlands, um, the carving cultural arts hub potential, again, uh, amazing work. And uh, through to the, uh, the bridge to bridge lighting, Ahamati Reserve, Albert Street entranceway, the list goes on. So I just want to acknowledge um, the great work that's gone on there and uh, uh, we'll obviously be continuing to get any updates as, as the work continues. I'll open it up for any other comments. Councillor Johnson. Uh, just to say that we have had the presentation emailed to us now, but just um, I personally would find it useful if we could have that material ahead of time, um, and particularly where we've got a presentation with lots of small... Um, you know, comment boxes on that, that can't be read from a distance. Um, having that ahead of the meeting so that you can think about what questions you need to ask and, and you know, have an understanding of where all of these places are, which we're not all, you know, 100% familiar with them, that would be really helpful. So just a note for future reports. Yep, that will be done. Uh, Councillor Naylor. Yeah, thank you. Um, similar to Councillor Johnson, um, I think the information that was provided in the verbal update was really interesting and really valuable. Um, it actually, some of it came as a bit of a surprise to me because I think whilst we've drilled down and spent many hours and many days on our long-term plan and looked at many programmes, I guess some of the larger programmes have individual items within them that we don't always have specific visibility of um, and the budgets to do with those are sometimes quite large. Um, I think Councillor Harpeter alluded to a suggestion of um, perhaps whether some of that could be revisited or reprioritised at later date and I certainly um, with some of the year two budgets I think what would be really useful along with that information is a clear understanding of the budgets that sit with those so that if we do um, get to the point where we have to look at the bigger picture and reprioritise within the programmes um, at all down the track then that is an easier process to, to actually enable that if we've got um, the information at hand. Um, but I would I really like this um, report um, and I'd it's not on the work plan, but I would um, hope that perhaps it would become a regular update, um, but with the perhaps written form and pictures as well. So I'm not sure if there's the intention for that um, by the officers, but perhaps I can bring that up again when we look at the work plan. Thank you. Okay, councillors, um, no further comments. Um, I don't think I need to um, write a reply. We will vote, please, uh, committee members.
And that is passed, six votes, four none against, thank you. Uh, just moving to number nine, which is our work schedule. Um, and in terms of, uh, for the future terms of reference, um, to widen the scope to include other uh, joint um, council rangatane work, uh, and that can be for, through the economic lens, through the educational, through the cultural lens, because uh, the terms of reference are quite tight around reserves in this committee. And although we've had a good uh, good discussion today, um, there there has been uh, there has been other really good work that probably needs to be highlighted as well. And this was a start. We always we always knew we were going to start with some common uh, work around reserves, but there is actually lots and lots of other work that we do. So to do that, it actually needs to be moved by council. So I'll refer that to council, and officers have taken notes of that, and that will come to council. We'll, um, we'll talk with our partners at Angatane, see what we can do in terms of the, the scope uh, enlargement there, and, and come back to this, um, this committee with that once that decision's been made. Um, so I'll, uh, we have the committee work schedule. Committee resolves that Rangatane on one or two uh, committee receive its work schedule dated June 2021. Um, are there any, um, uh, Councillor uh, Naylor? Um, two things, Mr Mayor. Um, I support your suggestion of um, widening the scope, but I do wonder if it would be useful for this committee, if, if that is the um, view of this committee, um, to actually make a recommendation for Council along those lines to consider, as opposed to us just discussing it at Council without um, our partners present. And I'd certainly um, be happy to second or, or support okay. a motion All right. well, it's such a, as that. Notice a motion that um, we we ask um, council officers to, um, just, just one moment, I'll just get the wording right. A recommendation to council. I'm getting advice that we don't need to do this from this committee. That we can be, we can put a proper notice of motion up at council. I'm, I'm aware of that. I, I guess what I'm suggesting is that we can discuss something at council and have a notice of motion with all the councillors in the room, but at, we don't have a indication from our partners in that forum of whether that's a view that they share. And so, putting a recommendation forward well, we at can, this committee, councillor, we can ask them. Well, that's what I'm suggesting. No, that's exactly what okay. I'm suggesting. Right. Um, whether it's a verbal or whether it's a recommendation, I don't mind. But it would be nice to go to the council meeting with an indication from the committee as to whether that's, um, that idea is supported. So I formally would have been happy to support a recommendation. But if you want to do it verbally, that's also fine. Um, but second um, point that I did want to raise while we're on the work programme is just checking with officers if the broader reserves update, such as that we had an item eight today, whether there's the intention to continue that sort of update or whether I'd like, it, I'd like to suggest that we do. Um, but just wonder, if, does that need to be a further recommendation from this committee or will that just happen? It's obviously not um, included on the work plan currently. I'll ask the officer to respond. Uh, for the recording, Cathy Diva Todd, um, Manager Parks and Reserves. Uh, councillors, that broader, outs that broader update is outside the scope of your current terms of reference for this committee. Um, so that is, uh, that, is, that is a bit of a dilemma in um, putting something onto your work schedule that currently sits outside your terms of reference. Okay, hence we need to um, discuss this at, at the full council. So look, we can, we can um, canvas our partners' um, uh, advice on that as well. Uh, I don't want to do that on the fly. I don't think that's appropriate. So um, I'm quite happy to move this, um, seconded by Deputy Chair. Um, and are there any further comments? There being none, we will vote, please. And that has passed six votes for, uh, none against, thank you. Uh, now moving through to um, 
Uh, would I move, uh, ask you for a kind of key to close out? Thank you. Well, I must say, what an interesting afternoon. You're finally learning what it's like to be walked with treaty partners. It's an education for all of us. But the good thing about it is we've got good people, good hearts, and we've got a good objective. I'm still for my five star, but it's gone, and gondolas. But I'm sure the gondolas may come back. Who knows? But um, yeah, I'll, I'll end with that and just to talk about what uh, Chris and, and Daniel both said. But it's good working with you guys. And at the end of the day, we're looking for the future of our people. When you do your long-term plans, we're looking down the track. And I want to say, jeepers, didn't those guys know what they were doing back then? Kia ora. Inoi tato. Kia tau, kia tato katoa. Te atapai o tato ariki ihu kraiti. Me te aroha me te atu, me te whiwhi nga tahi tau ki te wairu tapu, ake ake, amine. And I'm off to my office for my next meeting, and I haven't had a coffee all day. Kia ora. Uh, kia ora, thank you, Wairamu. Uh, acknowledge everybody's attendance here today.